Well, good morning and welcome to Church Online this morning. I'm so glad that you're able to join with us. I know we've all been watching a lot of screens this week, uh, some of them to stay informed and some of them to distract us. Today, I hope you're watching a screen with the idea that we're coming together, we're connecting, and we're allowing courage to be poured into us. We're here to encourage you today. And uh, I know we miss meeting together. I know you're missing your donuts this morning. I have no idea how much money we're saving on donuts right now, <laughs> but it's a little bit. But we're looking forward to the day we can all be back together. Until then, we're meeting like this. And so I'd like to, to turn our attention to the Gospel of Luke in chapter 8. And there it says that one day, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and set out. And as they sailed, he fell asleep. A squall came down on the lake so that the boat was being swamped. And they were in great danger. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we're going to drown. And he got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waters. The storm subsided, and all was calm. Where is your faith? He asked his disciples. In fear and amazement, they asked one another, Who is this? He commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. I was just a little kid. Back in those days, uh, we would go to a popular fast food restaurant chain, not nearly as frequently as people do today. And so another big treat was that we would actually eat in the car. Don't ask me why, I, I don't remember. But we, were, we got our hamburgers and our milkshakes and our fries and our apple pies, and we're all sitting as a family in the car. And then when it came time to, to unload some of the stuff, because I was the oldest of the kids, it was my job to take it to the trash receptacle. And so I'm walking across the parking lot, and that's when there was a bolt of lightning and a clap of thunder that was so close, it sounded like it was right behind me. Everything that I was carrying just became a fear offering in the sky, just debris scattered all over the place. And I literally went up into the air, and my feet did a little jig without ever touching the ground. My parents and my siblings were laughing hysterically in the car. In fact, I saw that food was coming out of their mouths, and they continued to laugh all the way home. I didn't think it was all that funny. Storms do a lot more than startle us. Storms can actually do a lot of damage on the surface of our lives. We've all seen the aftershocks of waves that are too high and winds that are too strong, and it can do a lot of damage. Uh, things get pulled apart and broken down, and lives can be completely reoriented. The thing is, is that when we see this on our screens, we, we have this assumption that happens in other places to other people, and we kind of work with the idea that we are exempt from storms. It won't be my company that downsizes. It won't be my health that fails. It won't be my finances that, that get stretched or run out. What you have to know is that storms come to every life. And storms not only startle us and they not only show us the damage that can happen on the surface, storms can reveal what's going on beneath the surface in our lives too. Um, you can be very, very tired and still unable to sleep. I'm sure you've experienced something like that recently. Jesus had been very active in ministry, and in fact, he had taught truths that called people out of their comfort zones. He performed miracles that brought amazing freedom into people's lives. Uh, even his family was concerned enough that they began to want him to take a step back and, and kind of scale down ministry. But Jesus found himself in a boat and falling asleep, and it wasn't because the work was hard or the days were long. It's because that he actually trusted his heavenly father. Sometimes you just need to take a nap. Maybe that's what you need to do today. I think God would be perfectly fine with you curling up on a couch, putting some background noise on TV, and just getting some sleep. In fact, if you need some help with that, thus saith the Lord, take a nap. <laughs> just go take a nap. Uh, in a storm, underneath the surface of our own lives, some questions can start rising and some concerns. We can start misinterpreting what feels like a lack of response from God as a lack of awareness or a lack of caring. God's not really ignoring us. He's just not accommodating our schedule. 
See, we would never or very rarely choose a schedule that actually challenges us or stretches us or teaches us significant truth. We tend to choose schedules that bring us a little more comfort, a little more affirmation. But Jesus wasn't responding to our schedule. He had something else in mind. Jesus didn't come into our world just to keep us dry. He didn't come into our world to keep us comfortable. Jesus came into our world to make us free and to make us brave. And that requires a very different set of circumstances. So when Jesus doesn't respond, we may be worried that he's kind of tapped out or not caring, but God does care, and he cares very deeply. He's not as concerned that we're going to get wet from all the drenching rain, and he's not worried that we're going to get buffeted around by strong winds. And that's because God knows what's going to happen. He's not anxious. We are going to go through to the other side of the lake. Jesus could put his arms behind his head, and he could close his eyes because he trusted his heavenly Father. So don't misunderstand that when we see Jesus acting confidently, that that is in any way apathy. It's not the same. Jesus believed they were going to the other side of the lake. That's why he was confident. The disciples believed they were going to the bottom of the lake. That's why they were afraid. The, um, Jesus was fully awake. So now they've woken him up, and he's fully awake. He doesn't just see the storm that's around them. He actually sees the storm that's within them. And so he speaks to the wind and he speaks to the waves. And his words restrain the ferocity of the winds. And suddenly everything is calm. Now there's no need to yell. It's completely quiet. I, I have a question for you. What would you like Jesus to speak to and restrain today? What would you like to see quiet and calm when he says the words peace? Be still. Jesus wasn't annoyed that his disciples woke him up, but he was surprised that they, uh, they thought this was the end for them. And so Jesus begins to speak into their lives. What we need to remember is that storms are actually temporary. Now, this insight actually helps us a lot. It helps us to dare to hope that something will be different. It dares, helps us to dare to see an outcome that's different than the one we're imagining. The storm we're in will not last forever. You are going to go through to the other side. So Jesus looked at his disciples. They're still drenching wet. They're soaked. Their hearts are beating wildly. They're probably breathing deeply. And they just watched the winds and the waves respond to a very simple command of Jesus. And then Jesus asked a question that the storm revealed. Where is your faith? What is your faith in? What I can tell you is if our faith is in ourselves, we're going to feel overwhelmed. And if our faith is in others, we're likely to feel disappointed. And if our faith is in our own resources, they could run out. But if your faith is in Jesus, you'll have peace on the inside, not just on the outside. One of the things that's really encouraging about this story is that God answers imperfect prayers. I wouldn't say that the disciples' approach to Jesus in any way represented a mature spiritual approach. They were reacting out of fear. They thought that they were going to die, and they thought Jesus didn't care. And they assumed some things about Jesus that were not true. And they assumed some things about their future that wasn't accurate. Still, Jesus listened. And he responded, God is with you in this storm. Don't focus on the boat. It may be tossed around for a while. Don't focus on the sea. It could rage for a season. Don't focus on the wind. Focus on Jesus. He's with you. And he's still saying it. Peace. Be still. You see, peace isn't the result of the absence of a storm. Peace is a result of the presence of Christ. Faith isn't determined by what you see. It's determined by what God says. And God says, you are going through to the other side. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. We will get through this with him. Let's just bow for prayer for a minute. Heavenly Father, we are in a storm. We can't tell 
how long it's going to last. We don't, we don't know how strong it's going to be. Would you help us see that you are in the boat with us, you're in this with us. Would you help our ears to hear what you say above all the winds and the waves that we're confronted with right now? And would you remind us that we are going through to the other side? And if you agree with that prayer, let's say amen together. Amen. Uh, by the way, there's a lot of stories of storms recorded in Scripture. There's one that was just about a perfect storm. Paul was the one who was on the boat in that story. It had gotten so bad that the captain of the ship actually ordered that all the cargo of the ship be thrown overboard. They were trying to lighten the ship so in hopes of being able to survive the storm. Everything was lost. Everything was wasted. And it's easy to think that that is what giving is right now. It's losing and it's wasting. But there's a huge difference between throwing away and giving away. Nothing given is ever wasted. In fact, our church leadership is appointing a team to be able to respond in better real time to benevolence issues as they arise right now. Uh, maybe there's a way for you to help lighten someone else's load through a generous gift. And so if you're interested in doing that, uh, you can log on to rcalvary.org forward slash gift. The letter R for Rochester, calvary.org and forward slash gift. Uh, before we conclude today, uh, I would just like us to have, as a church family, a prayer focus for these next few days. And I'd like us to think about and pray about these things together. And so for us, I'd like us to pray for COVID-19, that the infection rates would begin to fall, that there would be protection for healthcare workers and for those who are providing essential services. And let's pray for moments of joy and laughter in our homes because peace doesn't always sound like quiet. Sometimes it sounds like giggles and laughter and when you hear that in your house, it's a sign that peace has come where you are. So this is going to be the end of our service, but we're gonna leave these prayer focus points up on the screen. And I would encourage you, just right where you are, whoever you're with, just take a moment, let heaven hear the sound of your voice asking for things that matter, and let's all watch as the peace of God invades our hearts and lives.